There it is. Here's a good one. Okay. I suspect that not too many of you know who this woman is. Chanifa Kamvongsa. How many of you know who Fred Bramfman is? Was. Good. Well, I'm going to tell you the story of the two of them because they're important for all of us. Um, you know, during the Vietnam War, from about 1964 to 1973, the U.S. did not only bomb in Vietnam and Cambodia, but it also bombed in Laos. As a matter of fact, it dropped more bombs on Laos, a country we were not at war with, officially, than we dropped on Japan and Germany during World War II. We didn't know anything about this. This is referred to as the secret war. And it was purposely kept a secret because it was illegal. Uh, Fred Bramfman was in Vientiane in 1969 as an education consultant, actually working for the US government. And all these refugees were coming into camps outside the capital city. And he began to meet these people. And he, he had been there for some time. He spoke Laotian. And he started to meet these people and ask them what, where they were coming from and why they were fleeing. And they explained about the terrible bombing that had been going on to the northeast of there in the Plain of Jars uh, for years, and that they could no longer stay there. These were all poor rice farmers. And uh, he asked them to, if he could write down their stories. And then he found um, a, a Laotian person he worked with who got to work with them. And he asked them not only to write their stories, but to draw pictures of what they remember of what happened. Eventually, there was a book put together which, by him, but of, of the stories of the farmers uh, called Voices from the Plain of Jars. If you don't know the book, I, I very highly recommend it. He, became the, he came back to the United States and testified in front of Congress to try to get people in this country to understand what was going on. That we were you know, just carpet bombing civilians uh, for nine years. Um, and part of it had to do with the fact that the North Vietnamese, when they were trying to uh, get south into South Vietnam, had started going outside of Vietnam thinking it would be a safer route. And so they would go into Laos and down through Laos and then back into South Vietnam. And the United States was bombing that Ho Chi Minh Trail. But they were also bombing in these civilian areas because they thought that these poor people might be sheltering the path at Lao, which, which was the, uh, the uh, resurgent group inside of, of uh, Laos, which was fighting against their reactionary government. Uh, you know, this went on and on and on. I got reacquainted with this story a few years ago when a man, an Englishman in Laos, who's been working with uh, the survivors. I mean, I'm going to. I'm going to sort of get ahead of myself here, but just, it, it's, it's impossible to tell a story, and it's almost impossible to get an idea of the scale of this bombing. There were all kinds of bombs were dropped on Laos, but perhaps the most insidious uh, were over 250 million cluster bombs. At least 80 million of these cluster bombs did not explode. They're still exploding every day. People are still 50, 60 plus years, especially children, are picking them up, stepping on them. They're being you know, plowed up by a farmer. They explode. Um, Fred Brampton was trying to tell people what was going on. He died a few years ago. Um, this man in England, this Englishman there, uh, Mike Boddington, had gone there more than 20 years ago to bring prosthetics to people there who had lost arms and legs. Uh, to try to care for them. And Mike t told me all about Fred Bramfman, and then he told me about this woman, Chanifa. Uh, Chanifa is a, an American, a Laotian American. Her family fled uh, from Laos in the late 1970s. Her parents, she was very little, uh, her parents didn't even want to tell her the stories of what had gone on there, but she gra gradually found out and then developed this organization in this country called Legacies of War, which has dedicated itself to telling the history, 
providing money to her care of the people who are still being wounded, and of course trying to get this unexploded ordinance out of the environment. And uh, you know, one of the last countries in the world to contribute in any major way to this was of course the United States. All she was asking from the United States was they contribute once a year to the amount they spent every three days bombing the country for nine years, every three days, which would amount to about uh, you know, $20 million a year. So this is her, this is her portrait. I'm going to read the quote that's on it, and it's just sort of a repetition of some of the things I've already said, but uh, I just want you to hear it again. The U.S. dropped 260 million cluster bombs in Laos during the Vietnam War, an estimated 80 million did not detonate, scattering throughout Lao villages, rice fields, schoolyards, pasture lands, forests. The equivalent of a plane load of bombs was dropped every eight minutes, 24 hours a day for nine years, more per capita than any other country in the world. This is called the secret war. The mission of Legacies of War is to advocate for clearance of unexploded bombs and provide space for healing the physical and emotional wounds of war. I would suggest, you know, go to their website. Uh, for a long time, the organization Legacies of War was this one person. Now it's two or three people. Uh, but they're doing an enormously good service for the people in Laos and also for people in this country who need to know this history, uh, who would also, I think, and trying to contribute to do the best they can to clean it up. If we were cleaning it up at the same rate as we have been for the last few years, it would take 3,000 years to get the bombs out of the environment. That's why it's so important that more money be dedicated and that this country bear more responsibility for the cleaning of it up. Um.